G'day guys, this is a really special episode of 4Drive TV. Today we're going to be doing something really special with Jung's new car. Now this new car is actually a long wheelbase for Tara. The original one was a little short wheelbase. Now due to Jung's expanding family, we have a need for a slightly bigger vehicle. And the wonderful thing about Vitara's is, this thing is actually only a little bit longer, but it's got an extra door, a proper fair income back seat, and actually, not a lot, but it's a really good storage space, which makes it ideal for a young family going four-wheel driving. But the problem with the Vitara is, it's not really that wonderful a four-wheel drive in its standard format. And that's where we come in. We're gonna make this thing into a real, proper four-wheel drive truck. And there's a lot of stuff we're gonna to do to it. So before we get started on that, what we have here is basically a 1.6 EFI long wheelbase manual Vitara. And it's in pretty damn good condition. Jung's got a good deal here. There's no rust in it. It's nice and straight, drives well. So what we're going to do is be modifying or changing or upgrading all the major components that need working on. Hi, I'm Neil from Piranha Off-Road. Welcome to this special edition of Pimp My Ride for Four Wheel Drive TV. As you can see, we've got a little Vitara behind us. You might have seen the old black one, which had a bit of a lift in it and the rest of it. Due to the expanding family, we now need a long wheelbase. The long wheelbase gives us a little bit more power in the engine department, a little bit more space in the back seats for growing legs, and it still gives us plenty of boot space to be able to pack up and go away for the weekend. First thing we'll do, a bit of body lift. The body lift is going to pull the body up off the guard to fit those larger tyres in. We can't get the rays out of the front end like we would in a live axle vehicle. So by doing the body lift, it gives us a clearance around the tyres to be able to put the bigger tyres on. And then we can also do the suspension to give us a bit better travel out of the whole thing. So it makes it a quite a good off-road package. It lifts it up, gets it off the ground. Obviously, we'll get the tyres changed to a good set of muddies, larger, give us a bit more ground clearance. Because of the new offset on the mud tyres, we're going to have to fit flares to this vehicle to still make it roadworthy. This makes the car look a little bit wider and a little bit more schmick. Another thing with a vehicle like this, because it is a bit lower to the ground and because of the way the suspension works in the front, what we're going to do is put some bash plates underneath the front of it. What this is going to do is just protect the sump and some of the engine components from being hit by sticks and rocks and anything that can poke up from underneath. This makes it bulletproof. If we land something hard on the front of it onto a rock or over a tree, we know that the bash plate's going to soak up that impact. Another thing that's going on this car is a brand new ARB bull bar. Now, ARB bull bars fit really well, but because we're doing the body lift on this thing, putting an extra two inches in it means we've got to raise the bull bar up as well. So we're going to have to modify the bull bar slightly, put an extra two inches in the mounts, reinforce everything so the bar is going to suit the front of the car and sit at the right height. Another thing we've got to do on this is diff breathers. When you're going through water like I've seen these guys go through water, you need as much height on those diff breathers as possible. On a lower vehicle like this, diff breathers are so important. We can lift them up get them right up to the top of the firewall rather than just on the top of the diff where they currently sit. The nerf bars that run down the side of this vehicle. The purpose of those is you can lean on a rock and you're not going to damage your sills. This is all part of the package to make sure that when you do go forward driving in it, we don't harm the vehicle and it gives us plenty of protections to be able to do what we want. Also this car's getting a dual battery system. We're going to have a second battery under the bonnet and plugs in the rear, fuse boxes, the whole lot. This is going to allow the family to run their fridge and their camping lights and all that sort of stuff overnight without putting any pressure on their main starting battery. And with all that work to do, it's going to be a busy week, so I think we'd better go and get started. Okay guys, starting from the beginning, with a Suzuki Vitara, one of the major problems with making these things into a fairly decent off-road vehicle is that the wheels are actually very, very small. Now, one of the ways to make more room to fit bigger wheels underneath is obviously to do suspension. But with suspension, you can only get so much out of it because basically the wheels still have to move up and down. So the first thing to getting more space for bigger wheels to work is a body lift kit. Body lift kit consists of a number of these aluminium spacers which physically lift the body off the chassis. Now this works well on a Suzuki because it actually has a proper 
full ladder frame chassis on it, unlike many other smaller four-wheel drives which are monocoque construction. So you can't do anything there. But with these, we can stick these body lift kits in. Body lift kit's 50 millimetres, which is legal in Victoria, so there's no problems with that. And that will then allow us to have a little bit more clearance to get a bigger wheel. Because one of the most important things is to get diff clearance, the only way to get diff clearance is basically bigger wheels. So body lifting, we shall go. This is an extremely labour intensive job. First of all, all the plastic bumper bars that are body mounted or chassis mounted have to come off the vehicle. Grill out, headlights out to be able to access the body bolts. Same on the rear end, bumper bars off to be able to access everything nice and easily. All the fuel lines, the brake lines that are chassis mounted that come up to the body all have to be either extended or modified to suit. Fuel filler hoses have got to be modified to suit. And then obviously we've got to try to lift the body square, place an aluminium block. Once we lift the body, it's then a matter of placing all the body spaces into the correct positions, tensioning them up, and then redropping the body back onto the chassis and bolting the chassis back to the body and making sure everything's tight and everything's strong. You then got extra brackets, brackets for moving brake lines and brackets for the actual body spaces themselves. So, Look, this to me isn't a home handyman will hit it on the weekend and have a bit of fun and lift the car up. This is something that should be done by a qualified distributor that knows exactly what they're doing and how much time and how much effort has to go into a job like this. At the end of the day, if this body lift isn't done right, you can have up to five people sitting in that cockpit of the car and one body mount plays up or something goes wrong, it can be a bad outcome. So it's always good to have it done by a qualified person. Okay guys, with a body lift kit there are consequences. For everything that we do to make this car better off-road, there are always going to be negative sides and I just want to explain those things before you blithely go and think, oh body lift is the way to go. Number one thing, the body comes up off the chassis which means anything that is bolted at the moment to the body that is also bolted to the chassis is no longer going to fit or there's going to be issues, there's going to be a 50 mil gap. So let's start at the beginning. First of all, where the petrol goes into the car, which is your filler neck, the hose may be too short and may need lengthening, or it may be a case in this particular car, we can just unbolt it, slide it up and put it back on again. Problem number one. Problem number two, the air filter and all the air induction system sits cleanly on the bodywork, but the motor is bolted to the chassis. There is now a 50 mil disparity between that, which means remounting bits and pieces on the engine and under the body to make sure everything lines up. If we don't do this, if you go to fit any other accessory, i.e. like a snorkel, things aren't going to be in the original spot, so they're not going to fit. Which brings me to my next issue. When we bolt a bull bar, all bull bars bolt onto the chassis, not the body. We're going to have the tube of the bull bar, instead of sitting across here, it's going to be sitting across the middle of the headlight. So the bull bar actually has to be cut and lifted. The nerf bars have to be cut and lifted. The gear levers disappear down into the body because the body was here, now it's come up. The gear levers are down here instead of sticking out the top anymore. They've all got to be lengthened. There's a whole host of little issues with body lift kits that you need to be aware of. Now, a lot of people say, so what, doesn't matter. But if those things aren't done right, your body lift kit is not going to work properly and you'll have all sorts of dramas. And let me tell you a little story. Not long ago, we had a bloke who did one himself and he complained that every time he went downhill, the thing jumped out of gear. The body mounts were not solid like we have used, aluminium ones, they were plastic ones, they allowed the body to move. It hit on the transfer box lever, knocked it into neutral angel gear. Quite a terrifying thing to do. So body lift kits must be done correctly, must be done accurately with the right type of spaces and obviously allocating for adequate clearance, which means either bending the levers or cutting out the floor so the levers don't hit. So if you're going to do a body lift kit, do it right. With the body lift done, next up is tyres and suspension. Stay tuned for that and more. It's quick, 